because it is estimated that 75 to 80% of the food we eat in the continent is produced by women. But if one looks at how much land we have control, how much land we, we own, it's less than 2%. Fazina is talking about rural land reform. In KwaZulu Natal, no land reform has taken place, no rural land reform has taken place for women. Even in, in, in communal areas, the redistribution uh, has not looked in, into the issue of addressing the, the, the needs of the women in terms of allocating land. To this day, in KwaZulu Natal, I cannot be allocated land in my own right as a woman. I have to be represented by a male relative, including my, my grandson. It's very sad for me because in 1965, my mother, was forcibly evicted from her, from her marital home by, by my uncle. And because I'm the eldest, I accompanied her to go to a traditional leader where she was asking to be allocated land because she has been evicted from my father's place. And I still, I can still hear Ubaba Unduna Umtalane saying to my mom, Mamun Kubane, if only this daughter of yours was a boy, I was going to allocate land to you. That was in 1965. And it's still happening today. Women are not allocated land in their own right as women. Women are not inheriting from their families. Girls are not uh, inheriting from their families because it's assumed that when they get married, they will inherit from, from their marital homes. How many of us have uh, uh, inherited from our marital home? Because even my mother couldn't uh, uh, inherit. She was forcibly evicted. Part of the reasons why we established the rural women's movement in KwaZulu Natal was because widows were being evicted from their land after their, 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 their partners has passed. Daughters were being evicted, even if their mothers are still alive, they were being evicted by their male relatives after their fathers has passed, have passed on. So, Fazila, if you're talking about rural land reform, in KwaZulu Natal, it, it, it hasn't happened yet because the majority of uh, our traditional leaders are not allocating land uh, to women. Out of 300 traditional leaders, I only know one traditional leader of Amashubi, Ubabungose Hadeb, who allocates land to women in their own right. And there is a confusion in KwaZulu Natal about the status of our traditional leaders. We, we are told we have 300 traditional leaders in KwaZulu Natal. And as the rural women, we are asking who are those on Kungulu who gave birth to so many traditional leaders in, in, a small, in a small province like KwaZulu Natal. We know that some of them were imposed by the apartheid regime. They are not, they are not our chiefs, but our government is not addressing, addressing that. We had hope that, what was the commission, the Intapo commission, that it was going to, to come up with an idea about how this province is going to deal with that challenge. Unfortunately, I didn't see the result going, going that route. We're seeing a situation where our rural land reform contributing to the feminization of poverty. 
Umama Ukaba. She's around here in Bosbeck. Her father, before he passed on, he wrote a will to say this farm where he was producing sugar cane would be inherited by her. It, she still got a written will, but the brother, her, her brother went and colluded with a local traditional leader and they, they, they sold the whole farm and turned it, and turned it into a residential, a residential area. It's, it's near Unizulu, it's called Kaba Village. Umama Ukaba is staying here in Johannesburg. She is unemployed and she is living in the mercy of her, of her neighbors, when in fact she should have inherited a whole farm from her father. She couldn't. The traditional leader, when she went to speak to the traditional leader to say, you are colluding with my brother to sell this farm and turn it into a residential area that is not legal, and the chief said, was your father okay upstairs to allow a woman to inherit from him? Was he sick? So for him, her half-brother was the sole heir. She couldn't inherit, although she's still sitting with the will. We haven't been able to address that issue. If we have lawyers here in, the, in this room, please assist us. Umam Kaba is in a very scary situation. She has no income at all, and she's 75 years old. Umama Kazile Hadebe has always had a big garden she was allocated land many years ago. She was born in 1928. She has always been using her garden, which is quite huge. It's, it's, it's more than an acre. She has been using it to raise her own kids, and now she's raising her great-grandchildren. Grand in her home, she is the only person who brings in income through her social grant. And she used to compensate her social grant by working in the garden. But like two years ago, men from a neighboring community started grazing their, their livestock in her garden. We, we encouraged her to go to a, a, a traditional court in that area. There were other people, she was the only woman. There were other people who were in the court who were complaining about the same problem of cattle grazing in, the, in, in their garden and eating their vegetables. When a turn came for Umama, Umama Hadebe to speak, the court said, they cannot tackle her case only because she's a woman. The court said, we do not speak to women. In 2003, as a country, or as gov the government passed the Traditional Leadership and Governance Framework Act, and that act called for the traditional councils to be established, and those traditional councils 30% of them are women. But in a traditional court, and that idea was another way of trying to transform the traditional courts. But even with that 30%, those women who are sitting in the council could not assist Umama, Umama Hadebe when the court said, we, don't, we, do, not, we do not speak to women come with the representative. 
And here we're talking about a person, a woman, a grandmother who was born in 1928. She's walking using two walking sticks and a man sitting there as a presiding officer had the guts to say to her, go back home. And five other men who had the same problem were compensated for an amount of between three and 5,000 rand. She was not only because she's a woman. At Zululand district, the Zungu family lost their father. The culture at Zululand district and at Umkanyagude district is that if somebody, if a member of the family pass away, we must go to the chief to, to report that somebody has passed in a family. And to do that, we must carry money. At the Zululand district, uh, the, 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 the family who is mourning the loss, they must have 300 rand for the chief. At Umkanyagude, they must have 500 rand for the, key, for, for the chief. You bring a, 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 a bit of water, like the size of this bottle, for him to wash his hand. It's, it's like a cleansing ceremony. He washes his hand and then you give him 300 rand or 500 rand. After giving him that amount, he goes back or he gets his secretary to go back to, to his books to see if you, your family has been paying the illegal levies. And in this situation, Usisis Mangele was told that you cannot bury your father on this land because he has not been paying Ukanda Mpondwe. Ukanda Mpondwe, I only heard about it when I was still very young. I think I was five, six years old when the, the apartheid government was a uh, demanding upondo, which, is, which was one pound from all the men. Women were not paying it. But that is still happening in, 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 at the Zululand uh, district. So this family could not bury their father for three solid months, only because they did not have enough money to pay Okanda Mpondwe because their father had not paid Okanda Mpondwe for his whole life. I don't know how much it was. They were only able to raise the money after a neighbor received Ilobolo for, for her daughter and they borrowed them the money. Can you imagine the body of their father in a mortuary for three months, how much are they going to pay? And then now they have to borrow money. We have these traditional courts, but in, in a magistrate court, if my mom has committed a crime, I cannot be expected to jump into, in, in, into her shoes and be convicted. But in a traditional court, Usmangele was like being convicted because she had to raise the money and the father was not there. He has passed on. That is part of the reasons I'm saying that our rural land reform is a form of feminizing poverty in the rural areas. Umama Hadebe is now sinking in debt. She's borrowing the money from the sharks to compensate her, her grant in order to feed her family. Why? She can't use her garden anymore. She doesn't have the fence. It was destroyed by, 
by the animals. Men who had the same problem were compensated. She was not compensated. So she goes out, a person who was born in 28, owing sharks, I can't think of it in our, in our culture. And I can't think of a leader who would say, you can't bury someone here. Ubaba I'm talking about was not the only person who couldn't be buried. An eight-year-old little boy from a young mother could not be buried for two months because the family, the mother's family, were not paying their levies. I think much. I've run out of my time. Thank you for, for that. <laughs>